Number 50. The hot and neutral wire supplying DC power to a light rail commuter train carry 800 amps and are separated by 75 centimeters. What is the magnitude and direction of the force between 50 meters of these wires? All right. So first of all, it's a little hard to kind of, you know, not. So basically, there's some current flowing and let's just assume flowing to the right. Okay, this is the hot then it goes into the motor of this you know, particular train, whatever. And then it comes out the other side and goes back. All right, that's called the neutral. Now, they told us a current, right, that's flowing. And the directions here, the current here uh, for the bottom line is going to be 800 amps. And since this forms a circuit, right, the current on the top one is going to be also 800 amps. All right, and they also told us the distance that these two are separated by, right? So let's just draw like a little distance thing here. This is 75 centimeters, but you know we need that in meters, so just do the conversion. So now what it wants to know, and also, by the way, it also tells the length, right, of these wires. So I guess the length, let me just make this a little neater. So the length of this wire here is going to be, both of them, uh, obviously, is 50, going to be 50 meters, okay? Now, um, let's move this on over just a little bit. So what we now have to consider is um, I want to look at each of these independently. So we have to apply something known as right-hand rule number two. And what that means is that let's just look at the hot wire for a second. The hot wire is carrying a current. Any wire that carries a current produces its own magnetic field. So right-hand rule number two on the top right helps us to identify how that magnetic field uh, basically rotates or the direction of that magnetic, magnetic field around the around the current okay so if you notice right hand rule number two is basically saying you point your thumb in the direction of the current and then your fingers will curl around okay your fingers will curl around this particular loop and your fingers then represent the magnetic field so if you take a look at this picture when the current is flowing up the magnetic field around this loop Right, if you're viewing it from the top, here you are floating in the air. If you're viewing it from the top looking down, the magnetic field here is rotating in a counterclockwise direction, okay, relative to your uh, view uh, point, okay? So right-hand rule number one, number two, excuse me, helps us to identify that rotating current, right? If your thumb is pointing up and your fingers curl around this thing, they're curling in a counterclockwise direction when viewed from the top. Okay, so now what that means is that when I look now at my hot wire and I have the current flowing through to the right, what I do is I point my thumb to the right. Then what I'm going to do is that my hand looks like now I'm asking for money, right? My palm is up and pointing to the ceiling, but palm's not important at the moment. But what you're going to do, point your thumb to the right, and now you've got to curl your fingers, like almost pretend like you have a pencil in your hand now or something in your palm and you're trying to wrap your fingers around the pencil. Okay, that pencil, so to speak, represents the wire. Your thumb then represents the current pointing to the right. And uh, now your fingers are curling around. Okay, and your fingers on the top here, and this is the interesting thing, on the top of the wire, then your fingers should be curling towards you, right? So we can represent that by little dots. Now there's going to be little dots everywhere. Okay, everywhere above that red, uh, excuse me, that blue wire. I'm not taking into account anything about the neutral wire yet. Below now this particular current is going to be uh, vectors into now the page. Okay, so everywhere below. So you put a whole bunch of X's all over the place. X, 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 You get the idea. All right. Now what I want to do is I basically now need to, okay, identify the force on the neutral wire that is created by the magnetic field of the hot wire, which was created by the current in that hot wire, okay? In other words, now, once I know what the magnetic field is being, or what the, how the magnetic field is being produced by this hot wire, now I can start to find the force on the neutral wire, okay? So now forget about the hot wire, all right? Don't look at it all. Now just look at the neutral wire. Now we have to apply right-hand rule number one. In other words, you have the current pointing to the left. So point your thumb to the left. You have all these little dots, 
right? Which means the current, the magnetic field is coming out of the page. So point your fingers to your face, right? So with your thumb pointing to the left and your fingers pointing to your face, you should look like a waiter or a waitress, right? Serving a meal. If that's the case, where's your palm pointing? It is pointing up, right? That's the direction of the force on that neutral wire, okay? That's the direction of the force. So now we just found out that, let me simplify the picture again, right? So here's the, do a little schematic here. Neutral wire is on the top. We realize that the force is upward, right? On the neutral. Now, let's do this again, okay? But for now the uh, neutral wire, let's see what that's doing to the hot wire. So, here's the schematic. Current's going that way, right? So now, let's look at it from the perspective of the neutral. All right, so now what we realize with the neutral wire here is that it is pointing to the left, right? So the current is pointing to the left. Let's apply right-hand rule number two to figure out what the magnetic field is being produced, what uh, direction magnetic field is being produced by this neutral wire. So with your thumb pointing to the left, you curl your fingers, and you're going to curl your fingers around the wire kind of like that. In other words, on top of this neutral wire, you have the magnetic field pointing into the page. So there's X's all over the place. And as you then curl your fingers around the wire and back out, your fingers are then coming out of the page down here. So there's a whole series of dots, dot, 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 right? Dots, dots all over the place. Now what we have to do after we apply right-hand rule number two to the neutral wire to identify the magnetic field being produced by it, now what we have to do is we have to apply right-hand rule number one to this wire to understand the force acting on this wire by the magnetic field produced by the neutral wire, okay? Now, right-hand rule number one says point your thumb in the direction of the current here. So your thumb should be pointing to the right. The external magnetic field are dots, which means that they're coming out towards you, right? So in other words, your thumb has to be pointing to the right, your finger should be pointing towards you, and now your palm should be, if you're doing that correctly, should be pointing downward, okay? So that is now the direction of the force on the hot wire by the neutral, okay? Remember, this goes back to way, way back when, when we started talking about forces on objects produced by other objects. So I could say, <clears throat> so I could say the force on the hot wire produced by the, or yeah, produced by the neutral wire is pointing down. And then I could say up here, I could say that the force on the neutral wire produced by the hot wire is pointing up. So if I now have to figure out the direction now of the force between these two, they should be repelling one another, right? The force of this neutral is up, the force of this hot is down, and they are repelling one another. Now guess what? You don't necessarily have to go through this analysis all the time. Anytime you have two currents that are going to be opposite of one another in parallel, they're going to be repulsive. And guess what do you think will happen if we flip one of them. Let's say we take this current and we were to point in the same direction as this. Guess what? They're attractive now. Okay? And you can go through that analysis if you like. So, <clears throat> now that we know the direction, my goodness, let's find the magnitude. So what you have to do is you just have to calculate it for one of them. You don't have to, like, whatever force being, you know, is produced, because all the currents uh, are the same and the distances are the same and all this stuff. So just calculate one of them and whatever force you calculate, let's say you calculate this force, it's going to be identical to the force on that other wire. Okay. So the force on the neutral wire produced by the hot wire will equal the current multiplied by the length of the wire, right? Multiplied basically by the length of the, and by the way, this is the current, <coughs> this is the current flowing through the neutral wire. This would be the length of the neutral wire. And this magnetic field now is the magnetic field produced by the hot wire, okay? Multiplied then by the sine of the angle between the magnetic field produced by the hot wire and the current of the neutral wire. And uh, it turns out that the they're, they're 90, so you can just cancel that in this problem. All right, now this simplifies a little bit. So the force acting on the neutral wire produced by the hot wire, current in the neutral, length of the neutral, multiplied by the um, magnetic field of the hot, okay? So we know the current in the neutral, they told us it's just 800. 
we know the uh, length of the neutral wire, right? They told us that it's going to be 50 meters, okay? And uh, we don't know, though, the force, the magnetic field, excuse me, strength that is produced by the hot wire. So how do we find that? Well, that's where this new formula comes in, okay? This formula is going to be the strength of the magnetic field produced by some current carrying wire, okay? So let's just do a little substitution. So this is IN, LN, and this is now going to be mu sub O times the current flowing in the hot wire, okay, divided now by two times the radius, okay? What's the radius? Well, and this is for the hot wire, by the way. All this is for the hot wire because this is just the magnetic field of the hot wire. So the radius here is going to be, if this is your hot wire right here, the radius is going to be any distance away from it. So that would be, this would be R, technically, right? And they actually told us R. They said that they're separated by 75 centimeters. Okay, so we do know what that is. The only thing that's new here is going to be this mu sub O. And mu sub O is known as the permeability of free space, which is simply 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th. Okay, we have everything now we now need to calculate. All right, so let's get rid of all this stuff. All right, let's maybe see if we can move this on up now. And we can now find our answer. So the force on the neutral wire produced by that hot wire is going to equal the current in the neutral, which is 800 amps. The uh, length of the neutral, which was uh, 50 meters, times now the 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th, times the current in the hot, which was also, right, 800 by the way. And that's then going to be divided now by 2 pi, times then the distance between them, okay? And the distance between them was 75 centimeters, but you know we need that in meters, so just do that, you know, conversion. It looks like we get a value here of about 8.53, right? 8.53, and that's in terms of Newtons. And that force would be the same on both wires, all right? So hopefully that helps, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care.